Good morning, afternoon, and evening to everyone joining us today from across the world. It's a pleasure to have you to be part of this Venus community. Uh, we're recording a session of this, uh, a section of this event today. So a warm welcome to those who are watching this on demand too. Today is the fifth installment of our Venus community, and we have two leaders from SSC and NWL sharing their insights with you today. My name is Shrey, the Digital Marketing and Events Lead for Intelligence, and I'm going to just briefly introduce the event for you. While I do, please do comment your name, where you work, and in what part of the world you're in at the moment uh, in the chat function so that we can all get acquainted. I know some of you have already done, so, so hi to you. Uh, please also use this chat throughout the event to ask any questions or drop your insights or perspectives uh, on what our speakers have said, or if you have any questions for the VIN team as well. Where possible, we'll respond to these directly within the chat, else we'll pick these up uh, at the end in our Q&A session. Uh, could you go to the next slide, please? So what do we have in store for you today? First, this is our fifth session. So uh, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the Vinners community, how it started, what it means, and why we're here. Then our Senior Director for Product Solutions, Stuart, will give a quick update on some of the new features uh, we've developed since we last saw you in November and some of the new customers we've added since the last event. Moving on, we'll spend a few minutes celebrating our star winners. Uh, these are the members of our community nominated by their own teams and our CS leads for being VIN champions, which is basically just for embodying our core values and driving change and outcomes with VIN Smart Video Notes. Next, we'll move on to the exciting bit, the part that everyone is here for, which is uh, the winning stories from Eamon Brownlee at SSE and Debbie Richardson at Northumbrian Water on how they've scaled innovation. Finally, we'll summarize uh, their top tips that you can use to help scale innovation yourself. This is also when we'll take some of the audience questions. And to finish off, uh, we've also got a special and exciting giveaway for all of you. So today's session is around scaling innovation. Next slide, please, Mara. The purpose with which we started the Venus community was to share knowledge and learnings with our community. Each customer, prospect, user, influencer, and team member is constantly learning, right? We all are. And gaining insights on how innovations can be scaled successfully and sustainability, sustainably. The Vinners community is the forum where we ask you, members of our community, to come together to learn, share, and eventually scale. Our first session was around building a first-time right culture, um, or right first time, depending on where you're from. Our second event was more specific and focused on building a sustainable health and safety culture. The third event was around the ethos of commitment to digital disruption and the purpose with which we implement innovation. Our last event in November was around the outcomes and benefits people have received through applying a smart video, a smart video and AI technology like VIN and sharing the learnings and insights all the way from you know, the initial insights they got to the actions that had come out of those. As you can see, each event is focused around the improvements and key learnings we can gain about practical topics that are relevant to us all. So that's what it's all about for us. Next slide, please. Our purpose from the start has been to help busy professionals simplify their work life through effectively applying and scaling innovation. And we're so lucky to have seen this firsthand. Our growing community now spans over 13 countries. And this community have all come together and aligned to our core values here at VIN and backed by a common purpose to uh, simplify business operations, bring agility and efficiency at work and embrace safety and sustainability at the core of everything we do every day at work. Simplicity, velocity, trust and mutuality. Those are our core values and we're proud to say that uh, they are often cherished. So today we'd like to say a big thank you to each and every one of you that have joined us and others that haven't been able to. We sincerely celebrate the winners who have been with us on this journey of innovation and transformative business change to make every day at work simpler, safer, and faster. We've got a great session lined up for you, packed with lots of insights, and I do hope that you really enjoy it. So now I'll just pass over to Stuart. Um, same morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. Um, so um, in terms of new winners, I guess I should stop classing myself as a new winner. I've been here six months now. Um, really exciting to kind of um, understand how VIN, how VIN um, is being used by our different clients and seeing our expanding range of, of, of customers and use cases. I just wanted to touch on 
um, you know, how we get the value from what we do and how we, how we, we take the platform and, and find new use cases. So since we spoke last, we've, um, we've taken on a number of new DNOs. So new use cases in terms of using our remote assurance to allow in Germany a DNO to connect new solar PV to the grid instead of having their auditors travel all around the country doing thousands of miles to try and assure um, new PV installs. We are working with the UK DNO to reduce the number of times they need to go to site for customers with issues with smart meters or loose meter boards or general assurance tasks that um, would typically have to go for multiple times, multiple site visits. And again, we're expanding our use cases again. Um, you know, we've, we've signed with um, a number of utilities again. So, you know, we're happy to be working with, with Seven Trend, with United Utilities, um, you know, in um, new developer connections, um, remote assurance. And as, as we bring up these new kind of, as we come across these, every, every use case is the same but different. And you're all coming up with slightly different requests and slightly different demands. And, and part of, Part of my, ta my task and, and the reason I joined Vintelligence is the ability to innovate and take what we're being asked and extend that. So I wanted to talk about a couple of the features that we've got coming down the road, some of the changes we've made, some of the things that are going to be available to you, again, to kind of think about how you can use them. Um, so we've always prided ourselves on VIN. The value of VIN is the asynchronous video element of it. You know, 80% of what we do can be dealt with through um, an offline customer-led interaction um, or remote assurance by a contractor. Um, what we do recognize in some of the use cases where the ability to kind of pick up, just pick up the phone and see directly what the other person is seeing, you know, so some of our, some of our customers that have large-scale industrial equipment, just the ability to get the customer on a live call for them to show you the problem they've got and the engineer to see it without even going to site um, is the next step in terms of that last 20% of cases. So we've worked on a live call solution. So whether it's an engineer needing a, a you know, more experienced, more experienced technician to, to guide them on what to do, or whether it's a DNO wanting to look at, um, you know, help a customer validate, are they actually looking at a, a low hanging power cable versus a low hanging telecoms cable? Um, or just, you know, just helping a customer reset their consumer unit instead of it being classed as a power cut. So we're looking at um, delivering that as a service so that you can, you can get a full end-to-end a full -end -end of remote assurance with VIN. Um, so we're really excited to bring that. That should be um, available by the, end of, by the end of the quarter, by the end of March. That's our target. So we should be bringing that in. And just one of the, because I'm conscious there's a lot of content, you know, from, from, from Eamon and, um, and the rest of the team to go through today. We've done a lot of work on, um, with all this remote assurance, how do we get you to, to understand what's really going on, you know, the power of this and getting a real view. So we've done a lot of work with our real-time real -time dashboards. Um, so you'll now be available um, to look at where the VINs are coming in. So as the VINs are recorded, you can see them on the map. But more than that as well, it's possible to switch the type of jobs so you can see what type of work is being done. And within that, you know, we've got multiple overlays now. So directly from the map, you can switch it to see the satellite view. So in this wind farm, it's obvious that we're doing work on this wind farm. These five, these are the four have not had an inspection for whatever reason. And you can navigate and manage directly from the map. So you can click on the VIN, view the VIN on the map there and then. So as a supervisor, um, this is available on the web browser so that a supervisor can take this out on the field with them, use a tablet, use a mobile, and actually, you know, you can be at one site and check, check the other four that are going on. So it really gives that kind of operational view um, to help you kind of manage that remote assurance and, and direct where to spend your time. Um, so I think I just wanted to bring up a couple of those. We've got lots of other things in the pipeline, and I'm just going to take this opportunity um, that... Our CS teams, when they work with you, they absolutely thrive on this value. So the more that you, the more that you tell them that you need, the more that you engage them and tell, tell them what you would like it to do, um, the happier I get. Um, the bigger that list gets, and Eamon was laughing before we started this, but the bigger the list gets of things that you need, the more, the more difference we can do to help. 
And that's it from me, I would say. Thanks, Stuart. Uh, so Stuart is our product manager. So you have heard from Stuart what new things are. We move to the next section of the event, which is recognizing star winners. So we at WIN recognize our community, uh, people within the uh, customers who embody the WIN mantra of simplicity, trust, and velocity. And today we are recognizing two of our champions among us, WIN champions. The first one to recognize is Mumtaz Patel, the delivery support manager from Cadent Gas. She's the key force behind the Cadent Northwest region to kickstart wind transfer transformation journey at a speed. So congratulations, Mumtaz. You have been selected by the wind team as one of the star champions of the win. Thank you. And the second recognition goes to Philippa Earthington. She is head of sales and planning at JLA. Uh, Wynn has been working with JLA for more than two years now, and Philippa is a Finn ambassador out and out. She's maximizing Win usage to realize benefits via pre-installed service, or I should say visual pre-installed service. So thank you, Philippa. So from here, we move to the next section or the core of this uh, session, which is uh, about our guest speakers. We have two of them here today uh, as uh, our guest speakers. The first one is Debbie Richardson, uh, the lady in the right in that picture, uh, or I see her in the right. Uh, so Debbie is a customer project distribution agent at uh, NWL, Northumbrian Water. She spent 30 years working in banking sector before moving to join Essex and Suffolk Water in 2015. And straight away, she started working on water efficiencies project. She looks after the Leaky Loo project right now, which is on the front line of engaging with customers, plumbers, technicians on a daily basis. And that's where uh, the wind comes handy for her, I believe. Uh, she has uh, got a strong passion in saving water and spreading the word. On a personal note, she's married and she is a cat mother. She's also a Paddy Scuba Driving Instructor, which is a very interesting thing to, to hear, Debbie. And she has been doing this for more than 20 years. She's first aid instructor. She enjoys photography and of course underwater since she is a Paddy Scuba Driver, Driving Instructor. So welcome Debbie to the session. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you here. And I will also introduce Eamon, uh, who is General Manager at SSC Electricity. Uh, Eamon is in the heating business in Ireland for 20 years now. He started as an apprentice as pipe fitter and moved to domestic gas servicing sector and in his, is in management role since 2013. As his role as a general manager in SSC Energy Business Services, uh, he requires leading the diverse team in-house staff and contractors to deliver in-home energy services. So services like a gas boiler, full home energy upgrades, retrofits throughout the Republic of Ireland. Eamon has, has a bachelor's degree in project management and business management. He is starting his master's in September. Good luck, Eamon. And it is in the field of energy management, as you can imagine. In his spare time, he spends time with his family, enjoys reading, going to gym, and he is an avid Arsenal supporter. Not team my support, but here you go. <laughs> Welcome, Eamon, as well, to the session. So what I would do now is I'll start with Debbie uh, to understand how uh, Debbie and NWL in the Leaky Loop project are using when and what benefits you are driving. So we start with simple questions is, you started with WIN only a few months back, if I know correctly, Debbie, not very long yeah. ago. And uh, how easy was for you and the team to adopt WIN within the organization? Okay, so things fitted in really well with the Leaky Loop project. Um, where we offer our customers free repairs on leaking toilets because it's saving us water, uh, saving our customers money, um, making the diagnosis easier, avoiding unnecessary visits, um, and saving valuable resources. Um, implementing VIN has been easy. Um, I think we started uh, the start of October 21, um, 
with the initial design the third week of October. Storyboard was built at the end of October and we started live November. Um, yeah, it's, we've gone from no capability um, to within two months of having the capability. Um, we discussed VIN for other uses um, over the last year to help our team um, without action really being taken. So we decided just to go for it for the leaky loose and, and it has worked really well. Brilliant. So you are in a stage, so you started in end of October and you are at a stage where you are now scaling this. So this is an innovation project or this is a project where you actually are experimenting if you can speed up your uh, complaints and uh, process behind uh, the teams that pick up those complaints. So what future do you see uh, uh, for being scaling up this innovation across the company? Okay, so using the video uh, capture to identify leaking toilets across our whole supply area, which is um, north all the way down to Essex and Suffolk. Um, we, it contributes to us, our goal of saving more to the more customers are aware, the better of the outcome for us. Um, the next steps for scaling this innovation is further reducing the effort needed to organise, book and complete a repair. Uh, make it more automated. Uh, we hope this is possible, um, obviously, when we get an automated decision, um, make it easier to book appointments because there's a lot of time spent um, on the phone, on the admin side of things. So that would be nice to, to reduce that. Um, so we can become maybe more proactive rather than reactive to, to these uh, leaks that we're finding. Brilliant. And uh, there are two aspects of this uh, technology that you are using. One is uh, giving it in hands of your customers so that they can raise the complaints uh, through the videos and visuals. The second aspect is those videos and visuals go on to assist your fieldwork teams. So how do you think they are? Uh, it, it is helping your technicians and the field teams to deliver the outcome saving visits within NWL. Okay, so um, so the I, th I think it would it would greatly assist our technicians, our plumbers on the grounds to be able to see these videos before they go to make sure we've got the parts, cut down and return visits. Um, we found even our, our customers um, who are a little nervous when it comes to technology have also managed to use VIN really easily. I send them the link, they send me the video. It's it's as simple as that takes the worry out of them having to describe any problems to us. Um, so obviously going forward, if the technicians could then be passed this information, that would make our job a lot easier as well. Um, it's also reduced the number of um, information packs that we sent out to our customers uh, because we, we can see what's going on without having to post something out to them for them to check. QR code has worked really well as well. Brilliant. So you're using all the power of when sending out QR codes uh, that customer can scan and report back. That's brilliant to hear. Yes. And uh, there are, are there any features that you think are beneficial that you are yet to be implemented? Um, features. The, 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 having the video has made it um, means less time. It's saving us time. Um, it would be nice to, to maybe have the features that we can get a little bit more information from the, from the customers to put some notes on there. Um, okay. um, so we, we have less time understanding and more time to solve the problem. Um, if there are challenges um, we face, we normally have to ask lots of questions and that's just cut, cut down on the, the amount of questions we're having to ask. Um, and it doesn't take weeks to put this, this in. It's, you know, to test and put something in place and, and prove the value. Brilliant. Good. I hope uh, Stuart and the team are hearing this. Uh, uh, what should come next? We always hear the community. And uh, from uh, your experience, uh, and how would other managers who are here with us today uh, as a win community and uh, as prospects, what they can benefit from using smart video notes? Do you have any suggestions from them? You've been using it for a few months now, and you are one of those which have, which have scaled very quickly within the organization. Yeah, so um, 
we're saying some challenge we have we, is how to the non tech savvy people giving them confidence to use the option. Um, there's what's the insight do we have that we've not realised from this yet? So that we can put more things we can look into, and and how to make more pe people more comfortable with sending a video, and the best way of advertising their QR code and the link. Brilliant. Any other top tips that you want to share with the, the team tips. who are about to apply these innovations or event transformation going on that journey, going to get onto that journey? Okay, top tips would say just go for it, get up and running, gain some examples. There was very little training. It's really, really simple, simple to use. Uh, we were up and running in no time. Start simple, get just what you need and then build on it. Um, We've asked for a few changes, different labels to be put on. Um, and to step back once it's in use and understand um, what it's telling you other than solving the problem and see if we can do to add value to it. Yep. So if I hear correctly, it's top tip is get on and use it and tweak it as you go along. I think so, yeah. Brilliant. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, I expect uh, everybody is putting some questions in Q&A. Uh, if there is anything specific to Debbie, we'll come back to that in a Q&A session unless they are answered on the chat. So keep those questions coming in, please, uh, as we move on from Debbie to Eamon to understand how SSC electricity is benefiting and how they are scaling up. Um, so Eamon, uh, if I start with the first question for you. Uh, uh, from your point of view on SSC electricity, what was the thing that you wanted to improve? Why were it here? Why were you here in the market of innovation? What did you want to change? Okay. So when I joined SSC electricity, the conversations with um with Vin between SSC electricity and, and Vin were kind of already in progress. So I kind of came in and was was asked to have a look at it and kind of take it up with yourself and eat and uh, and the team. And initially, what we were looking at was how do we reduce the amount of unnecessary call It's probably similar to what Debbie was saying as well. Unnecessary call-outs to jobs where we've had domestic gas customers with issues with gas boilers um, calling us to say something isn't working and we're sending an engineer out just to find that it was a simple fix that could have been solved over the phone potentially. So that was the initial purpose that we were looking at at the VIN platform for. Um, what we found with that was we were going to reduce, obviously, our visits, which was going to reduce costs, reduce carbon miles, but also get a resolution to the customer quicker because when you're talking heating systems and you're talking winter, speed is of the essence. So we, we looked over an awful lot of kind of the warranty calls we were getting as well for um, new boiler installations and we were attending those and we found that the trend on the kind of warranty calls were was always fairly similar. It was probably a misunderstanding on how to use the new heating controller um, or not setting thermostats correctly. So again, the use of VIN, sending out the link and getting that information just allowed us to remotely diagnose that and get the customer to kind of interact with the system and, and fix it themselves to save us having to go out to them. Um, it also improved our first time fix. So for the more information we have before we go out to a, go out to a house, um, a lot of gas boilers will have kind of similar issues and common problems. Um, so if we can get fault codes from the boiler, description of any particular noises or what the boiler is doing, in, in a lot of cases, it can kind of allow us then to make a diagnosis and pick up the correct part on the way to the house um, to save having to go off and get the part and, and schedule in a return visit. Um, again, that's speeding up the, the resolution for the customer. It's reducing our, our cost. It's reducing the customer's cost as well because they're not, they're not incurring two kind of call-out fees and things like that as well. So that was, that was the area we were looking to improve, and that's where we initially implemented the software. I completely agree uh, with the boilers. Speed is the essence. And if we are providing the speed of solution of the problem, uh, it's absolutely brilliant service to the customers. So where did you see the value of intelligence and how soon did you start seeing the benefits out of it when you started on the journey? Well, we started seeing the benefits fairly soon after once we kind of had everything uh, mapped out with yourselves and we had the storyboards ready as well. We started to kind of look at um, other areas where we could use it. Um, one big area we looked at was our QA visits. So rather than just using it as a, as a tool to kind of reduce our, our carbon miles and our visits, we were now looking at it as in what, what data can we get from our site audits? Um, 
when 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 the when the manager is going out to carry out his audits, live audits or post audits. So we created storyboards then for specific job types, whether the gas boiler repairs or gas boiler services. Um, we then started kind of implementing that. So we, we started carrying out the audits through the VIN app. Um, almost immediately, that just cut down the current process. We were, we were carrying the audits out on paper, having to kind of upload them onto a, into, into the drive, then manually input that information onto an Excel spreadsheet, which I remember when I was sharing that, which is you had a good laugh at. Um, so it was a very kind of, I suppose, for one audit, you were probably talking 30 minutes worth of work in getting that audit up into the system and getting it getting it kind of um, archived the way to where it needs to be. So by doing that within, it's just, it's instantaneous. So we, our audits are done in real time. They're, they're saved, they automatically open the system. And then it also then allows us to actually look at the audits, look at the audit, audit scoring. So the, the team worked with us on kind of producing the scoring metrics as well. And we can look at the, the various audits, the types of audits, the, the scoring, how many failed, how many passed, why did they fail? Um, is there a trend in the reasons why the audits are failing? So it just gave us a whole lot more data to look at and analyze to be able to kind of improve our own processes and, and focus on that kind of the safety. As Trey said earlier on, simpler, safer, faster. And we've definitely seen all of those benefits almost immediately once implemented. Absolutely. And for both of the... Uh the things that you just said, uh, what I'm here also here and getting to is your engineers and your team have got to time to do a service to the customer rather than doing the office work at the back end and doing all that stuff. So you have efficiencies within the team as well, which is great oh, to have. Yeah, like yeah. It cut down the administration on them audits. Like it, it cut that down 80%, I'd say. Like it was, it was kind of instant and, and just gave us much better better data to work off as well. Yeah, and me coming from an engineering background, we never like to do paperwork. We'd rather be in the field and doing the job rather than doing the paperwork in office. Absolutely. But, and you are now uh, looking to expand into the subcontractor work as well. So how do you think Win will help to show the subcontractor work, which is quite a uh, big thing around what you do today in the boilers and the retrofit area? So. We, we've actually, so there's kind of two parts to that. We, we expanded out onto the subcontractor base on the heating side of the business, which is our gas boiler service and gas boiler installation. Right? So we, we kind of, we rolled that out. We created kind of uh, job forms for, for the guys to use out in the field. And um, that was then allowing us then to, ca again, capture a full picture from start to finish of the job. So for instance, if we're carrying out a gas boiler service, it, we were capturing the, the initial gas tests. We were capturing images and video of the whole installation, the environment that the boiler is in before we do anything. Um, then during the boiler service, as we strip the boiler apart and we're testing the components, we're capturing imagery of that. So again, it's just proof that the boiler was carried out from a quality perspective. We, we were carrying out the boiler service as we're supposed to. And then after we're then checking that everything is left back the way it was and we're capturing images of that. So on the subcontractor side, that's, that's allowed us really to, um, on the gas side, to be able to desktop audit those jobs and to be able to kind of make sure that everybody's adhering to the quality um, and also the, the conformance of what's involved in servicing a gas appliance, making sure that all the relevant tests and checks are carried out, that all the certification is correct. Um, and also then reducing, again, the need to go and post audit all the jobs by actually physically visiting the house. We can now look at jobs and if we have a concern over any particular one that we see during the desktop audit, we, we can go out and we can have a look at them instead. So again, it's reducing reducing travel time and um, giving back more time to the QA manager and the team managers as well to, to get on managing the team. And it also brings out the consistency of the work as well. So everybody follows the same process and the same quality as well, which is, uh, I think, really helpful if you're working with multiple subcontractors across the teams. It is because the boiler servicing um, and installations, it, it very much has to follow a process. And People like engineers will have kind of different ways of doing things. However, you still have to follow that methodical, logical process of your testing, your installation, your testing, your paperwork. And what the VIN form kind of gives us is that laid out in a logical order. So they're kind of completing it as they go through the service, they're completing the VIN as well. And um, so then streamlines, it makes it easier for the guys on site as well. Indeed, indeed. And now you are scaling it to the other areas. I know, I mean, since I've been working with you for uh, right, right from the beginning, I know you have been very quickly moving in, in almost every uh, part of the business that you have been working on and your teams are um, along with others. So uh, 
how do you think the win will deliver the outcomes for all the other business units units that you have started working on? Well, the other so so the other business that we're looking at it with is our our home retrofit business, which generation green home upgrade. Um, so what I'm working with the team there, and it's kind of the stewards really helped me out with it. Uh, I think, as he said, I'm giving him a bit of a headache by, by giving this to him. But um, we're, we're working on a pricing tool for our sales consultants at the moment. And uh, what the pricing tool is going to allow us to do is turn around the quotes quicker to the customers, which is obviously going to be very beneficial in terms of the customer's experience and also and our conversion rates as well, because we're, get, we're getting those quotes to the customers kind of while we're standing in the house with them um, rather than them having to be going off and getting processed elsewhere. So that's kind of the first the first area we're looking at. Um, the next thing with that, along with, with doing the pricing tool, will also be survey forms for those consultants. So kind of opposite to what a gas boiler installation it, it is, it's still a complex thing. But when you're now getting into a deep retrofit, we are talking about insulation measures, solar PV, windows, doors, heat pumps, potentially. There's an awful lot of information that has to be captured during a survey. So what we're going to be, what we're looking at doing is we're going to be building specific storyboard surveys for each one of those technologies. So that will then accompany the quote. So while, while the sales uh, or the consultant, the energy consultant is on site, he's or she is able to capture all of this data so that when the customer says, okay, I want to go ahead with this work, that that information can then be given to the contractor for review before, uh, before we proceed. So what that's going to cut down on, if we take kind of a typical case of an external installation uh, on a house, we would now currently be sending over to the contractor basically just the measurements of what was taken from site um, and the house type and things like that. And the contractor would then go visit the home and he would do a technical check basically to make sure what was kind of sold on site matches what's actually on site. Okay. So from talking to the installation contractors, they said that they could probably, they could mitigate against approximately 70% of those home visits by just having our quote and, and a good survey showing the kind of front side back elevation of the house and you know, being able to get a see, see a picture of the environment, they'll be able to just look at the survey the quote and say, yeah, we're, we're, we're good to go with that, which again, speeds up the whole process for the customer again and gives a much better experience. Absolutely. And you are using the full power of an end to end, not just the survey, but also how you implement yeah. and then possibly and then, showing those exactly. the yeah. work as well. The next thing kind of on from that when we get to it is to have the, the contractor similar to the gas contractors is to kind of roll it out to the, the, the bigger base of contractors on, on Generation Green that again, they are filling out the forms and feeding back when jobs are finished. We're getting full detailed uh, images, videos, data on, on the works that were installed. So we, we have a record of that as well. Um, just in case we have to revisit it down the line, we can, we, we can go in and we can see the full completed job as well. So that, that's, that's the next step. That's good to hear. So there's quite a lot to do in your area. And uh, I know uh, for sure the teams are working hard with you and your teams. So how effectively you have been able to scale the innovation using Vin? Uh, when we started this journey quite a, some time back, you had lots of lots of things in your mind about I want, you wanted to change the way of working, how it's done. So how effectively you have been able to do that until now? Um, quite effectively. So, so we, we have a good team here as well. You know, um, our, our service team manager, Justin, who you've met, uh, Philip on the, as the install manager. So they've been very, very involved in getting this rolled out to all the subcontractors and engineers on, on the heat side of the business. I mean, one of the challenges we always kind of face um, when you're trying to roll anything like this out with subcontractors and field engineers is, you know, there's always a challenge of, oh, this is going to be viewed as, oh, this is more work for me, or oh, why do you want me to capture all this? It's a bit like Big Brother. However, how we kind of socialize the message of, of, of why we're doing this, it's basically to protect them, protect us, to provide better customer service um, by capturing all that relevant data and being able to have and being able to review it if needs be. It also then kind of allows us to, to look at our own processes and say, right, we can actually lean out some of this. We can make life easier for everybody. And how we've kind of done it effectively as well because Luckily, I, I have been on both sides of the fence. I was a gas service engineer, so I know what's going to slow you down and what's going to speed you up. And working with Justin and Philip, we were able to really kind of develop it that we're only going to capture the information that we actually need. So, uh, and again, like I said earlier on, the forms are all based off a real logical flow. So it goes step in step with, with the work that's actually been carried out on so, site. And as soon as they kind of, uh, we got a couple of the engineers using it and they started seeing the benefits of it, um, it was adopted very quickly. And um, so, so scaling it in that way has been has been uh, has been very effective. It's been it's been brilliant. Thank you. 
and your top tips for the fellow community members who are here and who would see this um, to scale the innovation simply, effectively, and quickly would be? Well, firstly, I, I looked at what we were doing and everything that was kind of paper heavy or repetitive, such as carrying out daily safety checks, um, audit forms, van vehicle checks, stuff like that. Look at all of that and say, right, can this be digitized? Can this be put into a bin? Because there's a highly, high, highly likely that it can be. And the guys will definitely work with you to, to realize that ambition as well. So look at everything you're doing and see where, where can VIN fit into this process. Um, another one there would be to kind of stay open-minded with it. So like, like I said, I'm working with Stuart on this pricing tool, which, which I was told, you know, it's not something we, we, we normally do, but here, let's have a look at it. So it's kind of stay open-minded, come with the idea, uh, engage with the team. And um, look, if they can do it, they're, they're very helpful and they'll definitely do it if they can't. Well, we go back to the drawing board and let's see if we can go a different angle with it. But it's about a constant engagement and constant trying to improve your processes. Um, and then, I suppose the last one, just review the data that you are capturing on site and, and your dashboard. See what's relevant to you and your business. And again, work with the team to build a dashboard to kind of give you out the reports and the relevant information that you need. Yep. Top tip on dashboards and reports, I must say. Uh, look at it and then change it if you want to. Exactly. So, Thanks, Emil. Uh, it's a good point. I would hand it over to Mala, uh, who is here to summarize uh, everything that we heard from the two speakers. Uh, thanks, uh, Vineet. Um, just a quick check. Can you hear me? Yes, okay. So first, thanks very much to both the speakers for the uh, amazing insights. And it's really humbling to uh, hear from each one of you as to how you've uh, used technology uh, to not just, uh, you know, create innovation, but also to uh, scale the innovation to uh, realize uh, benefits uh, for your uh, teams uh, and give your customers greener choices and, you know, roll it out wider to uh, the wider ecosystem, not just your own colleagues, but your customers and your contractors as well. There you go. There's a lovely CCC there. So it's colleagues, customers and contractors, right? So and uh, just a few uh, tips that my team has noted down based on what uh, you just shared with us. And I'm really happy to summarize it for you. Uh, and uh, Debbie, thank you so much for telling us that we should just go for it. Uh, it uh, reminds me of just do it, but so it's almost just go for it and get it up and, uh, you know, start simple, uh, build on it uh, and, you know, gain some examples and to take a step back and reflect on what it's doing for you so that you can, you um, um, customize or configure or tailor the process uh, for your team so that that way uh, innovation gets embedded, uh, it drives behavior and uh, drives um, outcomes as well so that the value for the business is there for everybody to see. So that was fantastic, uh, Debbie. And looking at what, uh, Eamon, what you had shared, and in fact, I've also made you know, long notes is, uh, uh, is of course, you know, looking at what are those kind of repetitive tasks that people are doing, whether it's your customers, whether it's your colleagues, or whether it is your contractors, and how can you free their time up and how you can, uh, you shared with us about the challenges that people think that sometimes new tools are, you know, head office being a big brother, uh, kind taking a big brother kind of an approach or giving you extra work. It's about messaging them to stay open-minded, you know, saying that technology is there to protect them and to make it easier for them and engaging with the team uh, in a way that uh, it meets the purpose and uh, the fact that, you know, it makes their lives simpler and easier. And that's something that, you know, we have uh, lived by right from the beginning when we set the company up. Um, nearly nine years back now, and uh, what we, what I also heard you talking about, is uh, engaging with the team wider, and focusing on uh, providing technology and tools that are very much with the ethos of uh, the age and time that we live in, where everybody wants to be digital, everybody wants to have greener choices, 
and everywhere you it's from a business perspective it's important for you to uh, you know cut those unnecessary uh, call outs so it's really about you know aligning with how uh, customers are looking for um, new technologies as well as aligning with how engineers work with a very structured uh, you know one step at a time kind of an approach which uh, is helpful to also embed behavior and of course finally what you did share is that reviewing the data being captured from the field teams and tailoring the dashboards as you go along is something that has really helped you to kind of review and track and uh, get better at what you do. So on that note, I'd like to say thank you very much again uh, from uh, my side as well as from the entire team side. And I'll hand over back to um, uh, Shrey. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so we've just got some of the questions come through from the chat that we can uh, ask. Let me just pull those up. Shrey, if I can start with one of the questions we got earlier, if yes, Mick please. is not here, he sent a question on LinkedIn or when he joined, uh, when he registered is uh, both to Debbie and uh, Eamon. Did you see any uh, increase in wind usage during the recent storms in Ireland and UK? Um, well, yeah, definitely because when the weather when the weather is um, is bad, like it has been recently, we we'd obviously we, we get a lot more boiler breakdowns, and that will that will result in us getting more vins from customers as well. So we have been using it a lot more, and um, we've also been using probably one of, one of the one of the parts I didn't really touch on is our, uh, the survey for replacing gas boilers. So all of our sales, like our sales consultants on the gas boiler replacement side, would be using it to gather the information in the surveys for the replacement of the boilers. So again, because it, because it's winter and it's very seasonal, um, we are noticing a, a, a much higher usage of VIN at the moment over the last couple of months, definitely. Thanks, Simon. And Debbie, in your area? Uh, it didn't really affect my project. Um, the weather doesn't really affect the, uh, the leaky loos that we get reported to us. Um, Apart from the fact that more people were staying in, um, so we've we've had a couple more, um, but not a big impact on our side at the moment. Thank you. Over to you, Shrey. I just wanted to make sure that I take out the question that came to me a couple of days back, even before the event. Debbie, we have a question for you from Nick Lane in the chat that says, uh, Debbie, can you share, please, your setup process in terms of complexity? Uh, of the software and support teamwork? Did you have to ask Vin, the VIN team every now and then, or was the setup process uh, fully sort of autonomously done? It was It was very straightforward. I was sent the link, um, we logged into it, and basically off you go. It, it wasn't complex at all. It was very, very easy, um, very easy for our customers as well, which is, is the main advantage for us. Great, thanks. Uh, Eamon, if you, I, mean, I know you've touched upon this already, but uh, if you have any insights on this question as well, feel free to. So you couldn't repeat it ever, sorry. sorry. Yeah, uh, it was just about the setup process uh, in terms of complexity of the software and support teamwork. So did you have to ask the VIN team every now and then, or was it was it pretty much the same? No, it's very, very, it's very user-friendly. Like it, you can navigate through the dashboards very easily, the, the apps, the, the storyboards and the forms, uh, like, it's very like it was a very very user friendly. So so we didn't have any kind of complexity in that in that regard. And any any question we did have exactly, we just reached out and it was answered straight away. And we and we have weekly, um, kind of a weekly cadence meeting with um, Aisha and that other team. So if there are any questions we have, we we would flag them there as well. Great, thank you very much for that. Um, Eamon, we have another question directed to you, which is, uh, did you roll out VIN to all your customers in one go, or was it one region at a time? Well, we mainly rolled it out on the gas kind of the service and the uh, breakdown. So regionally, we mainly operate Dublin, Cork, and Galway. So, but we didn't kind of specifically say we'll only use Dublin or we'll only use Cork. We basically, if a call came, if a call came in, we we sent we sent the link um, to to a customer from either of those regions. Uh, and thank you and. Uh... Debbie, if you have any insights on that as well, 
the question was did you roll yeah, much the much the same that um the qr code and the link is on our, our website so you can go to all of our regions north all the mm -hmm. way down to the south um so yeah it was there for all of our customers to use i'm sending it out to technicians um if i have a customer ring in i will send them the link if they can't describe the problem to me so yeah it's available for everybody um, another question has just come through, Debbie, for you. Um, Debbie, have you now started sending uh, the customer VIN recorded to the plumbers making the fix so they can see it themselves? Or now that we're seeing the video in NWL, have you cut aborts out alone with the first internal view? We don't send the videos to, to our plumbers. We haven't got the capability to do that at the moment. As something I believe that we are going to, to look into. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. Uh, I think that's all the questions we've had in the chat. If anyone has any more uh, at the moment, we've still got a couple of minutes. Oh, just another one coming through. Uh, what other subscription fees, training, onboarding process, et cetera, everything needed to be up and running? Uh, either of you can whoever would like to go first to answer that i think it's i think it's it's case oh. specific isn't it um yeah <laughs> so we, we can pick that one up definitely i mean it really depends on the use case the, the number of users the size and scale of it um we can absolutely pick that up separately yeah, the one thing that I would add uh, to uh, the person who's asked that question is that we have a pay-as-you-grow model, and typically the training and onboarding is part of the same thing. So uh, you can pretty much get started um, uh, on using it very quickly, and you can uh, scale and uh, as you grow as well. So happy to pick that up separately, as uh, Stuart has uh, suggested. Great. I think... Uh, I think that's all of the questions we have. So we just have one more thing to go through and then uh, we have a couple of minutes of the gift of time. Marla, if you'd like to just share the last slide that we have. Sure, just give me a moment here. Yeah. No worries. Um, if anyone does have any other questions that they think about after the event is over or when you know, you're thinking about, um, please do feel free to send in uh, any questions to uh, me, which is shrey at intelligence.com or hello of intelligence, which is the email that you can see just below uh, on our free trial. Uh, Marla, would you like to just give a few points on the free trial? Uh, sure. So um, we have an out of the box uh, capability to have you try our technology. So what that includes is a few out of the box storyboards such as job completion. So as you've probably guessed uh, and pretty much on what Eamon shared as well, it is about uh, you know taking those re repetitive tasks, digitizing them simply without having to uh, invest in building a, an app, a bespoke app. We are ready to kind of get you going quite quickly. But the two week free trial offer includes an out of the box storyboards uh, on job completion on asset works or health and safety checks. So it's uh, you can test the technology and uh, you will be able to also um, have not just test the technology from a, the point of view of somebody who uses it in the field, but also somebody who is in the back office who is provided a su supervisory console uh, with decision aids. So we believe in decision dashboards, uh, which means it, you can help the take a decision with regard to a specific job in the field. And what you get as part of the free two-week trial offer is some of these things, which are predefined statistical dashboards. You'll see how simple and intuitive and easy it is to use. And uh, once you've done had uh, uh, a taste of the technology in two weeks, uh, we'll be then happy to kind of have a conversation with you to see how they can be tailored for your specific use after the um, trial offer, uh, if you were to uh, go ahead and continue with us. Uh, we'll definitely kind of uh, make it as um, seamless uh, and easy as possible. Uh, and um, you, if you're interested, please do write in to uh, shrey at wintelligence.com. It is S-H-R-A-Y at wintelligence.com or hello at wintelligence.com. 
and yeah and enjoy the simplicity of the intelligence technology uh, i must tell you it's an award winning technology even though i say so myself when we are getting quite recognized from across the globe uh, and it's no longer the world's best kept secret the you know the news is spreading so um, do give uh, it a, um, a try great uh and that's all we have for you guys today. So thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we'll give you back the gift of four minutes to your day. Um, thanks, Eamon and Debbie, once again, yeah. for uh, speaking for us and sharing your top tips and insights. Uh, you can find out more about what we're getting up to and uh, follow-ups from this event uh, on our LinkedIn and social media, which is uh, at Intelligence. So please do have a look. And uh, thanks everyone for joining. Thank you.